Hi, my name is Mr. B, as like in Honey Bee, something sweet and good. Something um, that seems to be really important to kids and to me and to adults too is something called gratitude, which is another way of saying thanks or being thankful for something. And we find that when kids are thankful for things, they're happier. And I have a feeling that happiness is important to you. You want to be a happy person. So I'm going to read you um, another story about happiness and thankfulness. Very different kind of story. Some of it's kind of complicated. So if you don't get it all, don't worry about it. It took me a couple of times to read it too. But um, it's called Zen Shorts. So it's going to be sort of a fun book. We're going to find out that there's somebody or some buddies in here that are kind of thankful about some things. Here we go. Michael, there's a bear outside, said Carl. A what? C called Michael? You ever had a bear outside your door? A bear. He's really big and he's in the backyard. What's he doing? Michael asked. Well, he's sitting. He, he has an umbrella, said Carl. An umbrella? It'd be something wild to see a bear in your backyard, but what about a bear with an umbrella in your backyard? By the time the boys got outside, their sister Addie was already talking with him. Look how big that bear is. Do you know what kind of bear that is, by the way, the black and white ones like that? Have you ever seen one at a zoo? Because they don't live out in the woods um, in the United States around here, do they? But they are beautiful. I'm sorry for arriving unannounced, said the bear. The wind carried my umbrella all the way from my backyard to your backyard. I thought it I would retrieve it before it became a nuisance. He spoke with a slight panda accent. Gee, I wonder what a panda accent sounds like to you, but he had one a little bit. Now, does he look like a scary bear to you or maybe a fun bear that would be friendly and you'd want to be with? And this is how Andy, Michael, and Carl met Stillwater. The next day, Addie went to have tea with Stillwater. Look at that. He lives at the top, in that little house atop that giant hill. Hello, Addie said as she stepped inside. Come in, come in, faraway voice called. And then she heard the voice say, Oh, yes, come out, come out. Stillwater was in the backyard. He was in a tent. And he's saying, This is my birthday present from my Uncle Rye, Stillwater said. He always gives presents on his birthday to celebrate the day he was born. I like it so much, I'm not staying in my house right now. Stillwater invited Andy to Addy, excuse me, to sit with him. Think about what he just said. This is a birthday present for my Uncle Rye. He always gives presents on his birthday. Usually we're used to thinking about what am I going to get for my birthday, and yet maybe there's somebody out there that wants to give things away on their birthday because they were happy, they were born, and they're still alive. You brought me some cake, said Stillwater. That was very nice of you. Is it your birthday, he asked. Well, no, said Addie. It's not mine either, said Stillwater, but let me give you a gift for my uncle's birthday. I will tell you a story. That is a story from a giant panda sitting in a tent in a backyard, living in a little house on the top of a big hill is going to be a little different story, isn't it? If at the end of the story that Stillwater tells, it may be hard to understand why he did this, and maybe we can talk about that sometime. Story is called Uncle Rye and the Moon. My Uncle Rye lived alone in a small house up in the hills. He didn't own many things. He lived a simple life. One evening, he discovered he had a visitor. A robber had broken into the house and was rummaging through my uncle's few belongings. The robber didn't notice Uncle Rye, and when my uncle said, Hello, the robber was so startled he almost fell down. If I were a robber in that house, which I wouldn't be, and all of a sudden a great big giant bear appeared, I'd probably fall down too. My uncle smiled at the robber and shook his hand. Welcome, welcome, how nice of you to visit. The robber opened his mouth to speak, but he couldn't think of anything to say. Because Rye never lets anyone leave empty-handed, he looked around the tiny hut for a gift for the robber. But there was nothing to give. The robber began to back toward the door. He wanted to leave. At last, Uncle Rye knew what to do. He took off his only robe, which was old and tattered, and said, Here, please take this. The robber thought my uncle was crazy. Do you think Uncle Rye was crazy, or was he just really kind or different? He took the robe, dashed out of the door, and escaped into the night. My uncle sat and looked at the moon, its silvery light spilling over the mountains, making all things quietly beautiful. Have you ever been outdoors when the moon is really bright and just stopped to look at it for a while? Poor man, lamented my uncle. All I had to give him was my tattered robe. If only I could have given him this wonderful moon. What do you think is different about that story? Would you have been like Uncle Rye and done that? He gave the robber something, and the robber went away. Different, isn't it? Do you think the robber was grateful for the robe or grateful to get out of there? We're going to find out. Somebody in here has something to be thankful for. Your uncle sounds nice, said Addie. 
I don't think I could have given away my only robe. I know how that is, said Stillwater, but there's always the moon. That was a good story, said Addie. Well, thank you, said Stillwater, and this is good cake. Thanks, said Addie, I made it myself. You know, if you make somebody something homemade, it's really special. You took all that time to do something for him, isn't it? The next day, Michael went to see Stillwater. Here I am, Stillwater called from the tree. Can I come up, said Michael. If you're careful, said Stillwater. What if we could fly, said Michael. We could cast shadows on the clouds, said Stillwater. But what if I fell, said Michael. If we fell, we might break something, said Stillwater. And that would be bad, said Michael. Well, maybe, said Stillwater. What do you maybe, said Michael. Okay, now here's another story um, told by Stillwater the bear to Michael on that summer day when they're at the top of a tree. It's called The Farmer's Luck. There was once an old farmer who had worked his crop for many years. One day, his horse ran away. Upon hearing the news, his neighbors came to visit. Such bad luck, they said sympathetically. Well, maybe, the farmer replied. The next morning, the horse returned, bringing with it two other wild horses. Such good luck, the neighbors exclaimed. Well, maybe, said the farmer. The following day, his son tried to ride one of the untamed horses, was thrown off, and broke his leg. Again, the neighbors came to offer their sympathy to his misfortune. Such bad luck, they said. Well, maybe, said the farmer. The day after that, the military officials came to the village to draft young men into the army to fight a war. Seeing that the son's leg was broken, they passed him by. Such good luck, cried the neighbors. Well, maybe, said the farmer. Now, that's the end of that little story, not the end of this whole story. And you might wonder, what, what's that story about? And what does that have to do with being thankful? But who in that story was the most thankful? The horses, the boy that broke a leg, the farmer? Somebody was thankful for something, and they were thankful even when everybody else said something bad happened. The farmer said, well, maybe. I get it, said Michael. Maybe good luck and bad luck are all mixed up. You never know what will happen next. Yes, yeah, said Stillwater, you never know. Look at that. I'd sure like to spend a summer afternoon sitting on a giant panda, but that's soft. The day after that, Carl went to visit Stillwater. Michael said I couldn't bring our, over our stuff to go swimming, and I'm mad at Michael. He's always telling me what to do, so I brought everything. Hmm, said Stillwater, it's a little pool. I don't know if all those things will fit. Well, let's see, said Carl. All right, let's see, said Stillwater. Stillwater looked at the pool. The things can go swimming, but he can, we can't, he said. I brought too much stuff, said Carl. That's okay, said Stillwater. I'll help you carry it home later. He was mad at his brother because his brother said you couldn't take anything over there, so he brought everything over there, and now the pool's too full of stuff to go swimming. Why does Michael always have to tell me what to do, Carl said. If he were here, I would climb up really high, and I would jump on him like this, and I'd do a big smash like this. You ever been mad at a brother before, if you have one? Later, Carl and Stillwater had tea. Carl said, Stillwater, you spent the whole day being angry with Michael. Did you notice how much fun we had? Carl watched the steam rise from his cup. I'm sorry I brought all this stuff, Carl said. You don't need to be starry. sorry, said Stillwater. Right now you need to carry. Hold on tight and I will tell you a story. See, he was so mad at his brother that he didn't have much fun that day, did he? Not much to be thankful for there, is there? Maybe the story will. A heavy load. Two traveling monks reached a town where there was a young woman waiting to step out of her sedan chair. The rains had made deep puddles, and she couldn't step across without spoiling her silken robes. She stood there looking very cross and impatient. She was scolding her attendants. They had nowhere to place the packages they held for her, so they couldn't help her cross the puddle. The younger monk noticed the woman and said nothing and walked by. The older monk picked her up and put her on his back, transported her across the water, and put her down on the other side. What do you think she said to him for doing that? She didn't thank the older monk. She just shoved him out of the way and departed. Doesn't seem very nice, does it? Was she thankful for anything? As they continued on their way, the young monk was brooding and preoccupied. He was all mad about what happened, wasn't he? After several hours, unable to hold his silence, he spoke out. That woman back there was very selfish and rude, but you picked her up on your back and carried her, and then she didn't even thank you. I set the woman down hours ago, the older monk replied. Why are you still carrying her? You see, in the last couple of hours, the older monk set the woman down, did what he thought was the right thing to do, was glad he did it, 
but the younger one was still angry and he can't get it out of his mind. Have you ever been mad for a while and you just can't stop being mad? Do you think you've carried it long enough? asked Stillwater. Yes, said Carl, and then Good said Stillwater. Do you think you've carried it long enough? Do you think you've carried your anger long enough? And this is how Addie, Michael, Carl, and Stillwater became friends. Who was thankful in the book and what were they thankful for? And is, always, is it always easy to recognize when you need to be thankful to somebody? Sometimes we get so used to people doing nice things for us, we forgot that they're doing, we don't even think they're doing nice things for us, but they are. I'm just wondering, next time I see you, maybe you can tell me somebody you said thanks for, for doing something for you. Thanks for listening.